Welcome to It's Art, Let's Talk About It, a podcast sponsored by the Museum of Western Art in Kerrville, Texas. Located in the heart of the Texas Hill Country, the museum is dedicated to the preservation and promotion of the American West, especially through the art of the West. In this podcast series, we will visit with artists, art collectors, and gallery directors working in the Western art genre. We'll talk about the history and heritage of Western art, and we'll talk about why talking about Western art is so important. I'm Daryl Beecham, the Executive Director of the Museum, and I'll be your host for It's Art, Let's Talk About It. The podcast is a member of the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network. In this episode, Daryl visits with Harold Holden, a sculptor who is in the Cowboy Artists of America. Harold has unfortunately passed away, so the episode starts with a tribute to Harold Holden from his good friends, Daryl Beecham and Jason Skull. I know you'll enjoy this episode of It's Art. Let's talk about it. If you haven't done so, please visit the Museum of Western Art in Kerrville, Texas. We'd love to see you there. Hi, this is Daryl Beecham, Executive Director of the Museum of Western Art. And for this episode of It's Art, Let's Talk About It, we're going to be visiting with Harold H. Holden, an Oklahoma sculptor noted for his monumental works and his general love of the horse. This interview was recorded in April of 2023 when Kerrville artist Jason Skull and I traveled to Holden's hometown of Enid, Oklahoma to capture his handprint, boot print, and signature in concrete for addition to the museum's Cowboy Artist of America Sculpture Garden. At that time, H, as he was known to his friends, was in somewhat declining health, and since he couldn't come to the museum for the ceremony, we decided to take the ceremony to him. I last saw H at the Fall Cowboy Artist of America sale in November, and he passed away on December 6th of 2023. I'm joined for this introduction by my good friend Jason Skull, who made that trip with me to to uh, Enid, Oklahoma, and Jason, I sure am glad we did. Yes, I am too, Daryl. Well, that was I, a fascinating trip, you know. It, well, we got to see a lot of country and, and, and learn a lot about our friend H. And the reason we went up there, uh, in addition to, to gathering his concrete uh, handprint and signature for addition to the garden, because we figured he would never make it down here to, to Kerrville, was to uh, borrow a work of art for the 40th anniversary show. That's right. And so we had a, a chance to do that. Um, you first introduced me to, to uh, H a number of years back. So let's talk about your friendship with him. Well, you know, I, I met H and his, his wife, Edna May, in the, in the mid-'90s uh, through the Working Ranch Cowboy Association uh, World Championship Ranch Rodeo. They had started that event and, and included an art show with it, and H was one of the artists that uh, was brought in for that. And uh, so that began a 30-year friendship that, that I had with H and Edna May. And, uh, you know, to think about someone that had a, a career in Western art that spanned 50 years or five, right, five right. decades, you know, it's just uh, pretty amazing to think because he was, he was there at the more or less the onset of, of the uh, resurgence of Western art and in its, in its uh, appreciation by those who uh, became collectors. Yeah, and he was one of those great... Uh you know, monumental sculptors, one of those guys who did the big pieces yeah, in, in a lot he, of ways. and He did, I think, 24 or 25 uh, monuments uh, in his just, life. Just fascinating. And, yeah. you know, of course, we visited with him and, and Edna May at their home on, in Kremlin, Oklahoma, you know, so uh, north on, of Enid. On H. Holden on, Road. On H. Holden Road. Yeah. And, yeah, and uh, at that time, um, we did not, we weren't doing the It's Art, Let's Talk About It. Uh, we had just started thinking about it, and he was one of the very first interviews that I did. I had to do it on my my cell phone, of all places. And the technology being as such it is, our producer, Tom Fox, and and the good folks at uh, Hill Country Podcast Network, uh, Texas Hill Country Podcast Network, uh, were able to transfer it from uh, from my cell phone to, you know, technology (laughs) good enough for the podcast. That's awesome. But that was an interesting, uh, you know, thing to do, talk about H, because... I, you know, I, I knew he was in, in poor health, did not know, you know, exactly how poor, yeah. but uh, what a loss to the, to the, both the, the sculpting community, the artist community, and just a all around great guy. Yeah. And the ranching communities too, because yeah. H, H crossed over into so many different realms because of that. And his love of cowboys 
his love of ranching, and as he pointed out earlier, the, his love of horses. And it was, you know, it was interesting because I knew he was missing from the garden. He had been brought into the Cowboy Artist of America in 2013, uh, 2013 12, yeah. somewhere in there, that 13, range, 13. Yeah. And he Actually, had just, 2012, you're right. He had just never made the trip to Kerrville to have his handprint. Yeah. And uh, that's about the time we had stopped doing them for a while, you know, and when uh, I got here in 2019, we reinstated that and started trying to fill in the, in the gaps. And it was you suggested that we can kill two birds with one stone. We can go up there Absolutely. and get the handprint made, borrow the work of art. And, and I was fortunate enough to say we had a few minutes there while the concrete was setting up to say, you know, H, would you, you do a little interview with me? And he was kind of reluctant to do it, but yeah. uh, it Glad was Glad you funny. did it. Yeah. Uh, he will be missed. Uh, uh, and, and Harold passed away December 6, 2023. So this interview is uh, uh, him, a posthumous look at his life, a, a discussion, and uh, we're really happy to bring it to you on It's Art. Let's talk, let's talk about it. So let's listen now to our interview with Harold H. Holden in an interview recorded in April 2023 on It's Art. Let's talk about it. Now we're joined by my special guest, a, a good friend of ours, Harold T. Holden, or H, as many of his friends call him, world-class sculptor, member of the Cowboy Artist of America, and a good friend of the Museum of Western Art. And H, we're glad to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate being here. Tell me a little bit about your career, how long you've been doing this, and what gave you the start? Because no one's born necessarily saying at three years old, I want to be an artist, but something inspired you to become a sculptor. What was that? My dad raised horses, put me on a horse when I was a kid. And he got killed in his airplane when he was pretty, I was young. Anyway, that inspired me in the horse end, and I've been, I've had horses all my life. Like to rope, like to, or used to. And between that and uh, subject matter was what I liked. And so everything I did was either cowboys or some Indian work. And I did my first sculpture, I think, in 74. There was a little foundry over at the time. But, but I, I was really a painter for the early part of my life. I was painted, drew, and painted. And, and, and I took up sculpting and got into monuments, and it's taken a lot of time from doing what you want to do. The, the small ones are fine, the maquettes, but then you got to do the big ones. And so everything that you want to have for shows and limits you sometimes. Uh, but when you're young, you can get this stuff done. You've had an amazing career. And like you said, you mentioned the monuments. And if I recall, there's six or so in the city of Enid, Oklahoma, near your home. And they're absolutely wonderful. Tell us a little bit about those six in Enid. The first monument I ever did, I did in 93. No, it was 86. It was a guy making the run of 93. And they ended up making a stamp on it. I did the stamp for 93, and it was big action piece. It was just life-size, but it was all action. Le legs off the ground, then one led to another. And I think this one I got in here is going to be 25. But when I started out, you had to do it the old way, the point up system. <laughs> it's a little different now, but my subject matter has always been my main drive. To... And that'd be the horse. Yeah, the horse. I, I did a big sculpture of a horse called World Champion down at Oklahoma City Fairgrounds, and it's supposed to be the perfect horse, quarter horse. <laughs> but yeah, horses, I love horses, and i I've always had horses. My dad, of course, I told you, was a horseman. and So it's really been just between being horseback and painting and sculpting, that's all I've done in the past. Kind of having to do the math in your head. Yeah. yeah. 
How many sculptures do you think you've done in your career? Any any idea? No. No. Just a bunch. Bunch. Yeah. Just a bunch. And you've got collectors all around the world, I know, because I know several of them. And they all speak so highly about the honor of owning a, a Harold Holden bronze. And, and they just, they love them. Everybody who's ever been a part of them. I don't, I'm glad. <laughs> I've never been satisfied with anything, but... <laughs> Most artists aren't. Let's talk about for a second the Cowboy Artist of America and your first forays into that, trying to attempts to get in. You were turned down a number of times, and then at some point you were brought into the CA and have had a, a lengthy career in it now. Yeah, the I was asked to come down to Phoenix twice, and... I decided I wasn't going to go again. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But later on, at the, one of the shows, it might have been the Free the West show, I'm not sure, but Fred Fellows came up to me and asked me if I would consider being in the CA. And I said, yeah, I'm just not interested in doing a lot of pleas, so... He said, no, I think you've the, got the best going right now. And so he's the one that recommended me to, to it. And, and you've been a member of the CA since when? 12. 2012. 2012. Right. That's after a, a long and lengthy career. So you've been a sculptor for a number of years prior to that. 74. Painting, I think, until I still paint. But it's just not as much going out. I started doing a calendar for Vernon Company it's out of a, okay. up north. And what they do, they have paintings, your paintings on calendars, and people put their business names down there. That's how they sell them. So I was the only one that did cowboy work for them. <laughs> there you go. And it lasted a while, just... And they give me free calendars with my name on it. I started sending those out. And then when they finally decided to go back to the farm scene, they, my wife said, we got to keep doing that because people expect those things. And she thought it was the best advertisement. <laughs> like when you give them a calendar or something, they hang it on the wall, and then they remember your name. So she's been in charge of that for quite a while. And we're talking about the famous Edna May. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Everybody knows Ed Mays who ever had to deal with a and want a, a an H sculptor or painting. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that that you know, together. You guys have been together a number of years and she's the backbone of this operation, don't you think? She is. She's she saved my life a couple of times. Yeah. And she was a good she's from a ranching family, a lawyer, but she likes to do everything cow horseback. So when I used to rope together, team rope, but I like to go over to Osage to drag calves, rope and drag calves. And she just, I got away from home, and I was, she decided she wanted to start doing that. And I ended up, she ended up coming dragging calves. And then we ended up going to the pitchfork every spring. Bob Morehouse was a friend of ours. And she got to ride a world champion ranch horse. So she thought she was pretty special, all right. <laughs> and she is very special. <laughs> Talking about special people, you mentioned Fred Fellows, others. Who are the artists uh, from your past that stand out as, as being special artists that everybody, if they're interested in the Western art world, who should they be, be looking at? I always, there's so many, but Tom Ryan was one of my favorite painters of the cowboys, the modern cow the cowboy that I know. I do some Old West things, but, but most of my subject matter has been the today or a few years ago. One of the works that we've we've come to Enid Kremlin, Oklahoma to borrow from you is a is a work called Rescue Team. Rescue Party. Rescue Party. Talk about that that one for a little while, because it's going to be in the the forty years of Western art exhibition at the Museum of Western Art, and we wanted a piece that represented your body of work, and I think we found one. It's different. It's really is one of, I 
had four pieces in the first Free to West show in 95. And I had a great big piece of Brandon seeing him drag a cow after a horse and rider and a calf. And, and that piece was in that show. And I sold quite a few. And I thought, there's no way we would drive That was the first year I was in that because the cattle market was down, the wheat was down around here, oil was down. I said, oh, no. And but I sold out, sold out. When you when you seek out subject matters, or do you use friends in your painting, family, or in your sculptures? You use whose likenesses do you use? You have friends, family, all of the above. All of the above. Uh, yeah, I got know lots of cowboys, of course. Right. And I've done. I did a sculpture of Bob Morehouse on his horse. It's in the museum down there. Right. But. All these, there's some cowboys around these parts. It's, they're not the big ranch cowboys, but right. <clears throat> there's some good cowboys. And I've been to some big ranches, and like the Pitchfork, the King Sabi, I went on there every once. And you learn what they do. So I get a lot of material while I'm out there, besides getting to do whatever the cowboys get to do. <laughs> Let's talk about your studio for just a minute. We're sitting in the middle of your studio outside of North of Enid, and, and it's just it's full of history, memorabilia. You've got photographs, book covers, our magazine covers. It's just a, a time capsule of a lot of life well lived. Talk about that. This is your kind of go-to place when you're trying to be creative? Yes, it is, and the photographs, and I like to look at good gear. I've got... A lot of good saddles and just bits and spurs, and I'm fascinated with <laughs> those. I've had traded with some of the best spur makers and saddle makers, traded art, <laughs> and a couple of them, a couple of the, the spur makers, old uh, Jerry Cates, he was, he's in the Cowboy Hall now. And Bob Mars, who made a couple saddles for me, he's mm -hmm. who just died not too long ago, but he was pretty well known in the cowboy world in Texas. And uh, I probably sometimes the sculptures change, but stuff on the wall usually doesn't. Yeah. Let's talk about the big sculpture, the the monumental that you're working on right now. What's it all about? It's of a guy named Frank Eaton. And it's one I'd always wanted to do for OSU, Oklahoma State University. That's their old mascot, but it's not the big head. It's the real guy. And he used to come to Enid when I was a kid. I had this little, oh, he was a pony horse. He's a pretty good horse, though, or pony, I'd call him. And I was six years old, and I used to go, I rode in the parade. We had, there was tons of people back then that rode in the Cherokee Strip Parade. And, and I'd rear this pony up in front of the judges. And so one of the prizes was, I still got it up in the studio upstairs, of $5 I won, first prize. <laughs> and one of the deals you got to do, you got to sit on an old, Frank Eaton's lap, Pistol Pete's lap, and had hold his gun. When I was six years old, pretty big impression. His son, Frank Eaton, was our milkman from Enid when we lived in the country south of Hairway. But he brought our milk. And so we become good friends and with him. And it used to, the story was when old Frank came to town, why there was a cowboy, Les Williams, old cowboy, they'd get in this station wagon together. And they were drunk, <laughs> tipping the bottle. And they'd ride around that, raising hell. And so I had, a friend of mine had a station wagon. Is that what they call them? Not a station wagon, a 
what do you call them? Stage. A stage coach? Stage coach. Stage coach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm lost in the... <laughs> anyway, the, I've got, I got him to come down and uh, during the parade one year, and I had Frank get in it and ride around and pray <laughs> just like his dad but, so this is the last piece I'm going to do big and it's the one I wanted to do for years I just I've done some that are not western I, I just did Barry Sanders right. and Boone and this one's going to go over there someplace right. but and I got one other one over there. It's called the We Will Remember. It's a life-size cowboy leaning down on the ground with his hat off. And it was I did it for the players that were killed right. from OSU to from when they were flying back from Colorado. And I had the inspiration to do that because my I lost my first grandson and when I lost him I fell to my knees and left right. in pain that's what I put into that piece right. and they could tell the, the people, families they could tell be it works that celebrate life or depict tragedy you can look at you as you're talking about these works and see the joy in your face and your eyes. You've enjoyed doing this, haven't you? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I and, love to do it. And we're going to hope we just keep on doing it for a very long time. Until I'm not around. <laughs> we appreciate you joining us today on the show and uh, on this po- podcast. It's art. Let's talk about it. It's always fun to spend time with artists and hear their thoughts on things. And we appreciate you, you taking the time today. Thank you. I really appreciate it, boss. It was our pleasure. And that was our special uh, guest, Harold T. Holden, H, as everybody's called. And we appreciate him coming on the show today. Thanks so much. I'm almost a ghost. (laughs) (laughs) They talk about live radio. This is exactly what we're talking about is you just have to flow with it. Our special guest, H, Harold T. Holden. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I know you can cut and put that, <laughs> make it sound they make me sound good <laughs> we always talk about radio being a network for for people like you and me i have a face made for radio right so we appreciate it thank you uh, thank you this is tom fox again unbeknownst to either daryl or harold the mic was still on after they concluded the podcast so we have a short bonus segment with harold holden um, anyway i started talking and I got carried away. After a little Crown Royal. I did. <laughs> I was, they said, you got three minutes. Fifteen minutes later, I was... There you go. I, I well, I, I promised you this would be, you know, ten minutes or so. <laughs> we went twenty, so... Really? Oh, yeah. It kind of flies when you're having fun telling stories about what you love to do. Oh. Yeah, that was, that was good. I appreciate it. Yeah. One of the reasons we're here, you know, today, in addition to picking up the work that you're lending us, is that we're going to do the uh, boot print and handprint little ceremony here in just a few minutes when the concrete sets up, because we feel like it's important to, you know, have you in the the garden, if you will, back there of the back of the Museum of Western Art, and um, you know, we're real glad we were able to come up and do this. Well, that's my honor to do it. Yeah. We'll post pictures of that to our website and social media, and it'll, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to, you know, I don't want to say uh, memorialize or, in, you know, in doctor, put somebody in the garden, and they'll be there forever and ever. So, uh, you know, it's fun when we could add somebody whose boot print, footprint, signature, and all that has gone missing all those years because, uh, you know, just timing, we were never able to do it at the museum. So since we were going to be up here, Jason Skull and I thought we'd just come up and make this happen. Well... You did. (laughs) We did. (laughs) We hope you've enjoyed this episode of It's Art, Let's Talk About It, a production of the Museum of Western Art in Kerrville, Texas. We hope you'll visit the museum in person. We're located at 1550 Bandera Highway in Kerrville, Texas. Find out more about us by going to www.museumofwesternart.com. And we hope you'll join us next time for It's Art, Let's Talk About It. The podcast is produced by the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network.